the Barbican Centre in central London for a one-day festival, Papers, which celebrates and explores the emerging art, architecture and culture from European refugee camps. Today we'll bring together poets, musicians, chefs, artists to name but a few and we'll be looking at the talks and presentations happening throughout the day. So let's take a closer look. My name's Lucy Yates and I was out volunteering in Calais for about three months um, and building shelters. So today we're just building a couple of shelters to show people what we did there, the kind of uh, situations that people are living in. A few weeks over the winter, helping out, uh, repairing leaky houses, making friends, um, understanding the world a bit better. And it's continuing, yeah, continuing that work now that I'm back in London longer term. You know, maintaining contact with people who've made it over here and coming to events like this, spreading awareness. And what's the situation like over there at the moment? Um, it's pretty awful, actually. But we, you know, last I was there. I'm going back every other weekend now. I'm having to work here um, for money, but <laughs> going back every other weekend to carry on build. Well repairing shelters because we're not allowed to build at the moment. Um, everyone's kind of hoping that we can start building shelters again soon, but that's really dependent on the police there and the government. Um, but yeah, there's about 100 people a day, as far as I know, arriving, and therefore, obviously, that's more people without housing, um, lots of families, I think, arriving. And um, yeah, the weekend before last, there was a massive fire, so loads of shelters burnt down. Um, we had to hand out lots of tents and sleeping bags again, which was pretty soul-destroying because we obviously built so many shelters to try and keep people like out of that situation. Um, so yeah, it's pretty hard actually. And I think what's really difficult is that the news has stopped reporting um, what's going on there. We really noticed like a massive lull in any kind of news reports since the demolition in February, March. Um, there's, it's a lot of people I've met in London seem to think that the, the jungle's disappeared, which in fact is wrong. There's actually about a thousand more people there now, and like I said, a hundred people arriving every day. What do you see happening to the refugees now, with regards to the lack of building that's that's been stopped coming over? Um, I mean, I really don't know. If, it's, if people are still arriving, I'm. It's, I mean, people, we know we've got friends, lots of friends now in camp as well who are still trying to get here every single night. And um, now that there's more and more people living in the north part of the camp, um, shelters have been stolen, there's like lots of shelters have been broken into, so sometimes people are going for showers, coming back, they don't even have a shelter anymore. It is getting more chaotic. Um, some people think that that's what was, that was what the plan was all along, really. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. It's just like I, I wish something concrete would happen, and I, you know, especially for all the children there who are on their own, the unaccompanied minors. There's hundreds of them who are just living there alone. Like that's at least, you know, they should be brought over and given asylum. But I don't know. I can't. <laughs> I can't predict the future. I think as long I, at the moment we'll just keep going and volunteering as long as we can, really, and yeah trying to just help people one by one, but it's not a long-term solution. <laughs> My name is Nils and I co-founded an organisation called the Worldwide Tribe with my sister and a couple of our friends and uh, we've been working with refugees and the refugee crisis over the last 10 or 11 months and uh, today is a celebration of the art and the culture that we've experienced over this last uh, almost a year because we've really seen some incredible stuff come out of the camps that we've been working in and we wanted to, to show it to everyone and, and celebrate the, the creativity that is born in these places. And tell us a bit about the Wi-Fi that's behind you. So this is a project that I've been working on with uh, a couple of other incredible people that help us out of the Worldwide Tribe. 
and because the way that the Worldwide Tribe started was through the internet and social media and that's how it got to where it is today and we thought that seeing as the internet is what got us to where we are it would be a really nice gift to give back to the people that we've been working with and it's been absolutely incredible where the, the results speak for themselves you know we've had 5,000 unique users in Calais um, and hundreds of unique users in Lesbos and the systems that we put in place um, and people absolutely love it. It's an incredible tool for people to be able to speak to their families and communicate with their friends um, and also to educate themselves. They can find out about new asylum laws and uh, the kind of things that they need to know to, to seek asylum. They can learn languages, they can do all kinds of stuff. So it's been an incredible tool and it's been really successful. What you see behind me is uh, a prototype for how we want to change it, because at the moment uh, the stuff in Calais is running off generators, or it has been running off generators, and we want it to be completely self-contained and self-sufficient, so you'll see a big solar panel, which is, uh, which is what we want to put in place and so we can get the whole camp connected and it can all be completely self-sufficient. And tell me, what inspired you to do this amazing project? Um, well, when me and my sister started, it was really just... Uh, we were very intrigued with the situation because of what we were hearing in the mainstream media. It didn't quite add up to us. There was a lot of, you know, talk about these huge numbers of people wanting to come over to us and the, the, the media was using words like swarms of migrants and marauding migrants. And we just wanted to go check out the situation for ourselves to see if what they were saying about these people in the news was really true. So we just went to Calais. We just thought, let's just go and see what it's like. And um, we spent the day there and met some of the most incredible people that I've ever met in my life. There was incredible, interesting um, people with very, very interesting stories to tell. And we felt that we just needed to share some of the stories that we heard that day. So when we came home, my sister wrote a post on Facebook which ended up going viral and getting shared 65,000 times. And from that, we started the Worldwide Tribe and used that momentum to raise money and donations for the camp and ended up raising like a quarter of a million pounds in a very short space of time and lots and lots of physical donations. Um, and we just kind of tried to keep that momentum going as much as possible and it's kind of brought us to where we are today. And where do you hope this will take you? Where do you see this in the next, you know, six months, year, five years? So one of the aims of the Worldwide Tribe is to really use our platform to raise awareness about issues that people wouldn't usually hear about or that we feel is maybe reported about in a biased way by the by a lot of media outlets. So we want to give true human stories of what we're experiencing on the ground to a large number of people so they can see what it's really like for the humans involved in this crisis. So I guess really what we're trying to do is raise awareness and change opinions um, and really help as much as we possibly can in the camps around Europe and all over the world. And finally, the t-shirt and the badge you're wearing, is that, um, is that the logo for this event? And also, if people want to help or donate or whatever, how would they be able to do that? Yeah, so the t-shirt is the new World Wide Tribe t-shirt, which we have started selling for the first time today. Um, and it will soon be available on our website, where you can also find out more about what we're doing. And there's lots of information about how you can help. And that is www.theworldwidetribe.com. Um, and then the badge is the logo for the event. So the badge represents the blue house which is in the middle of the courtyard, which is the house that was built by an amazing artist in the camp called Alpha, which was in the southern section of the camp in February, which was due to be destroyed. So we rescued the house. We thought it was beautiful and we rescued it for this event and a couple of other events we have coming up over the summer. Hi, I'm Mark Pierce. I belong to, or I work with, not belong to, the Worldwide Tribe. And I also represent um, what used to be called Pikba, but now it's Lesbos Solidarity on, on Lesbos. They're a, a group of uh, very mixed uh, people from all over the world, quite literally. Um, very special people. And it's a, the Pikba camp is, is, was originally set up and still is. Um, to deal with people that are sick, disabled, uh, bereaved, have uh, some kind of special needs. 
um, over the years and they've been there for quite a long time at this camp. Um, they've um, developed a, a really, really good, strong core team. Um, they're just amazing people. They, 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 they live and breathe um, their work. I'm privileged to know them. I've been over there six times in, in the last few months uh, for a week at a time, helping them to um, uh, brainstorm problems like um, usually to do with um, housing, tents and landscaping and stuff like that. Practical stuff. And um, I'm really proud to be here today with my Pikpa hat on because I, I prefer to call them Pikpa because it just trips off the tongue. It's a nice, it's a nice word. Um, there's what solidarity. Um, is. Oh, I can put up with that because I love the people. <laughs> and tell us just quickly what it is that you are selling here today and also the response you've had. Okay, well, to some years ago there were a group of. Um, refugees have come over to, to Lesbos who decided to stay um, and they've come back to the camp and they're working with the refugees there to de de develop the bags um, they're, they're all made from life jackets all these colors are original the only thing that is not original is the liners and the zips that they're there to give it a body all the money goes back to the people who work on the on this project and some of that money goes back into running, helping running the camp. So it's kind of a fundraiser in a way. Um, so every single penny that we've made today, and we've done quite well, will go back to, to Pikpa. I, I, I cannot get away from Pikpa. I just love the word and the people. Um, that will all go back, every single penny. And whatever I have left here, I will sell to friends, anybody I meet on the street, <laughs> um, eBay, whatever. Uh, my name is Matthew Elias Shepard. I was called uh, by my very good friend Mark Pierce, who is uh, one of the members of the Worldwide Tribe. And he asked me to uh, come and captain this boat that uh, I pulled from the Mediterranean Sea, filled with people. And tell me a bit about that. Uh, like many, many, many boats, it came uh, in the middle of the night, chock full with uh, I mean, almost 10 times the number of recommended people that it was supposed to have. This particular one, is rated to have six people. Safely, I would say it would hold 20, but uh, this came with, with almost 50 people in it. such an amazing and inspirational event here at the Barbican in central London. We have spoken to some truly inspirational and wonderful people. We'll catch you next time on Arabesque. Take care.